Hello and welcome to the Future is 3D. My name is Jeff Christiana and in this video we're going to show you how to print an object using just your keypad and LCD. I've copied quite a few sample G-code files to this S-Disk using ScheneForge and I'm going to go ahead and bring it over here. I'm just going to plug it in. Okay, we're plugged in, we'll go back over here. Now we're just going to go ahead and use this control knob and this enter key. These are for future use. But today we're going to use the enter key and then the control knob. So we'll zoom in. So we're going to hit enter. We're going to go down to card menu. We're going to scroll down to refresh. Now these, <clears throat> I've labeled these as small, large, small, medium, small, all these SM, and then C's are calibration. So C is a calibration plate. Uh, it's a three inch by three inch plate, and then there's a 20 by 20 by 10 calibration block. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and print out, let's see, we wanna print out a turtle. We'll go ahead and select that, we'll enter. Now and there's your information. This is your tip temperature, and this is your bed temperature, and it's waiting for user. The SD card, as the job progresses, will get up to 100%. Right now you're at 0% of your job. This is how much time has elapsed, and this is how high your Z height is. And this 100% here, that's how fast you're printing. So if you want to print faster, you just turn the knob as it's printing, and it'll make the machine go fast. You can go up. You can go up to 999. Um, we've gone up to 200% before, but I recommend 100 for, for you when you're starting out. Um, and then I'd print the next job at 200 and then compare the results. So we're going to go ahead and hit the Enter key. And you can see the printer is springing to life. Now this is using the start.gcode file. You can generate G-code from other systems, but you need to make sure that you take our start.gcode and end.gcode and make sure those are at the beginning and end of your, of your generated G-code because it will not auto-home, it will not um, auto-heat, it, you know, it could do something quite a bit different. So. Depending on what you want to do, I recommend adding the start and the end.g code files. So right now we show ourselves our tip is heating. Our tip heats up very fast now. Here's our brand new all aluminum. We got a brass tip, got a 0.35, got a 500 Celsius uh, heat. We got a thermistor hooked up to this. The heat cartridge on this um, will heat up to 500 Celsius. It gets up to temperature really fast. It's very nice. It's a very clean layout. We've got our geared motor. We've got bushings that ride on both sides. It's a very small footprint. You can see from above, very nice design. This is actually the first of its kind and will be released shortly. We're going to be doing something a little different about the front here. That works really good for right now, but I want to come up with a different way of, of attaching that belt to the front. <clears throat> this one here is on a, a white 1616 Glacier Steel. Let's see how we're doing on our on our heat times. So we're already up to 100 and 192 Celsius. We're almost to temperature. This is the this is the temperature you want to get to. This is where we're at. This is the bed where we want to go. This is where we're at. So we're at 45 Celsius. You can in Skeen Forge make it so the tip temperature slows down. You can change that 
So a case we're at the point where it heats up so fast that it's, it's really beating the heated build platform. You can always make that change. These are going to arrive the temperature pretty close. Um, I wouldn't worry about it. If you want to, you can preheat your bed ahead of time and then go into the print job. So the bed is right now, yeah, plenty warm to take that job. So we should see some action here pretty soon, five more degrees. And then over here on the laptop, I'm able to generate G-code, work on other things without being connected, which is very handy. One note, do not plug in your laptop to the USB port while you're printing. Because what's going to happen is going to interrupt the it's going to interrupt your print job. So as soon as you plug a USB into here, your Ramps electronics are going to reset, and you're going to lose your print job. So the printer has started up. It's extruded a little bit of material there, and now it's going to go right into the print job. <clears throat> the printers are extremely quiet. With this new print head, I suspect we'll be able to really push the limits at how fast we're going to be able to do a print. Right now it's doing the little tail, doing another little foot. A .35 is a really good all-around nozzle size. Of course, if you're going to make something you know, uh, two or three feet tall, you're going to want to go with a much larger tip and recalibrate, but this is for pretty fine detail. I wouldn't go any lower. You can, you can achieve some really small .02 layer heights with this, but as for top down, um, .35 is, is pretty nice. I think anything else smaller for nozzle size, you're going to run into uh, some jamming. In case there's any impurities, I mean, dust in the air. Some people put an attach a sponge right here just to catch, you know, uh, dust particles. <clears throat> so as you can see, our new design come right through. You got spring tension, idle bearing pushes right up against, right up against the uh, the filament driver. Everything is metal, so there's no. Uh, Room for air, it's all CNC milled. Nice surface finish. Nice and quiet. We've also got a fan here that keeps the center chamber cool. If you didn't have that, your heat would travel and your plastic would melt further up the chamber, which we do not want. You can kind of see inside there. Right now we're using three millimeter filament. With this design, we're able to change out our shaft and with a 0.75. And there's some modifications we're going to do the top, so it'll take both types. This one right now would, would just be a three millimeter head, but future developments we will uh, look at using a uh, universal top with interchangeable chips. Right now you could raise this up, use a wrench and unscrew that tip off and screw a new one on. We're having, our next design is going to actually incorporate the whole shaft with the tip. So if you want to switch between 175 and 3 millimeter, you just unscrew that tip and the whole shaft will come out with you. And you just screw the whole shaft in and away you go. You can see it's printing along the little turtle there. Very good. Let's go over here and look at our display. It says we have printed for three minutes. We are printing PLA at 180 degrees Celsius. We're holding temperature. We're using a pretty, uh, pretty good PID settings. You can see the uh, heat upper left light that's flickering, that is rapidly turning on and off the, uh, the tip 
the heat for the tip to make sure it stays right in. The other light that just flickered, that was for the heated build platform. <clears throat> you come back over here, you know, we're right on it, we're right on. This is real time. You can see the bed fluctuating a little bit. Head stays right on, right where it needs to be, target temperature. Very nice, very nice with the, the Marlin firmware has proven to be uh, a huge benefit to, uh, I think, 3D printing everywhere. Um, been very happy with it. And with the ability to now adopt a computerless connection and do my prints right from here, I think that's going to be a huge benefit. So the Z height, we're at 0.57. It's very nice to know that. We are 16% into the job, the 16% SD. And we're running at 100%, we're running at standard speed. So if I want to change the speed, I would just grab the knob here and give it a turn. And you'll see the printer immediately jumps into a faster, faster print. So if you want to back it back down, turn it counterclockwise, back to 100%, and your printer will resume back to normal speeds. So this print job is going to take a while. I think you've seen quite a bit about how to print from an LCD screen. I guess we could go ahead and run through some menu options here. Let's see what we can see here. While, while we're printing, we have some options. You can watch. You can tune. You can actually change the speed, which I showed you from the front panel. You can also do it here. You can change how much plastic is flowing on the fly. You can change the nozzle temperature on the fly, bed temperature on the fly, fan speed, Fan speed, we don't use a fan, maybe in the future, but you do have the option. That's all your options right there. So back to main, down to control, you can go into temperature, and you can make adjustments here as well to the nozzle, your minimum, maximum temperature. A lot of this stuff I would not even mess with. It's your PID control. I would not touch any of that. Motion, yeah, I wouldn't touch any of this either. And go into any of that. There's no reason to get into any of that. Store memory, load memory, I'm not really sure what that does. I'm going to have to play around with it and then restore failsafe. I'll have to do some research on that. So really to go to from watch to, and you can also go down here to stop print. That'll stop the print job. There is no pause at this time. Um, under control, yeah we just saw control. So really when you're in a print job you've got your watch and you've got your tune, which very handy to have. So bed, bed temperature, nozzle temperature, flow, speed, back to main. So I hope this was informative, and our print job is zipping along there. And I'll put out a uh, probably some more videos on some more advanced features and hopefully we can start getting these uh, your up, down, left, right, center, function one, function two, function three buttons up and running here over time. So, alright, well have uh, fun printing and if you don't have a printer, get one and join the revolution. We'll see you later.